one question I think that comes up quite commonly is now in light of these newer therapies, such as Ibrutinib, should people start therapy earlier than they did before? Um, you know, we used to initiate therapy for patients when their good counts got bad. So if the doctor tells you you're anemic, uh, your red cell count is low or your platelet count is low, or if you have big and bulky lymph nodes, that's usually when we would start individuals on therapy. Um, in the light of these newer drugs, uh, patients always ask, should we wait? Should we still wait? Or should we start these therapies earlier? Will that change the disease course for me? That data we don't have yet. Um, uh, there is a study um, that was randomized to look at patients with high-risk features or aggressive features to their disease, whether waiting as they normally would until they needed therapy or starting them earlier with drugs like Abrutinib will make a difference. That data is not yet available. So for now, we are not recommending patients to start therapy earlier than they would even if they got chemoimmunotherapy. So you still wait until you really do need treatment. Um, and I think there's a benefit to that. I think that until we show that um, starting you on an agent earlier will prolong, make your survival so much better than if you waited until you really needed treatment, um, I think it's important because if we you don't need to give you any, to you know, all agents potentially have toxicity. If we don't have to give you any therapy for a few years and you don't need it earlier, why should you start it? Unless there's very good data to say that it absolutely changes the disease course, then, then we'll be in for it. But for now, we don't start even these novel agents sooner than we would otherwise. Now, what about if you get a drug like Abrutinib, um, how long can you go? Uh, right now, when we start these novel agents, at least currently, um, when you start a drug like Abrutinib, um, you're going to take it indefinitely. So a sort of chronic therapy, like if you take it for, if you have other medications that you might take for diabetes or high blood pressure or a cardiac problem, um, you're going to take this indefinitely unless you're having a side effect that's intolerable that you can't manage with your physician or if the drug stops working. And that can be variable. Um, so there are individuals um, who can go years on a Brutinib without needing other therapy who are doing well. If you have a side effect that's unmanageable, that can happen early on, that can happen later. So it, it's very variable how long somebody may be on a Brutinib. Um, and that's, un, you know, again, it, it depends on the patient's course. Um, when it comes to other therapies, obviously venetoclax is a new therapy that's also been approved for relapse patients with CLL. So if you've had prior therapy, this is another oral agent um, that you can take. Uh, right now, you would take it indefinitely again. Uh, however, there are many strategies that have looked at a, uh, venetoclax in shorter durations depending upon somebody's response to the therapy. So I think for patients, the field is evolving and for you all to be aware that there may come a point we're hoping or looking forward to the fact that you might be looking at different combinations of these oral therapies with other agents that then we can stop that therapy, um, that you may not be on them indefinitely depending upon your response to the therapy. And so I think the even if you're on one of these agents now, it, it may evolve that you'll be able to stop them at some point soon um, or your doctor may tweak that. And so I think uh, the good news is the field is continuing to evolve.